Hi, I'm Edward. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to download and install ZapProm Pro 3.0 on your Mac. So we're on our website, and you'll see underneath the mass header on our website some download links for the software. One is where you can go to buy it and then download it and download trial, which are basically the, these two are the same. So we're going to select download. And this will navigate you to a page that kind of gives a description of ZapProm and all the benefits and features of it. And then you'll see that there is a link for downloading ZapProm Pro for 10.0 or higher. So we'll select this and let the downloader run. All right, now that it's been downloaded, we can go to our download folder and select this ZapProm Pro file. And inside of here, you'll see a DMG file file called ZapProm Pro Mac and select that to open and the installer should mount itself on your desktop. Now all you have to do is select on that and the installer window will open. Alright so now here we are at the ZapProm Pro installer window. The installation process is really simple. All you need to do is Grab this folder that's in this round circle and move it over here and drop it on the folder that says applications. What that is, is an actual shortcut to your own application folder. If you double select it, you'll see all the files in your application folder, including the one we just dragged there, which is Zap Prompt Pro. So now we can actually, once we've done this, close this window because we don't need it anymore. But if you want to look at the user manual and um, other do uh, sample documentations and stuff, you might be interested in selecting this folder where you can find all that. And there's actually a PDF file in here that is the user guide right here that you might want to look at and learn a little bit about the software. But for now, this is about the installation, so I don't want to get off topic. So now that we've installed this into the applications folder we can actually close this and close this and then take um, these mounted installers and unmount them by dropping them in the trash and they'll just disappear so now when we open the applications folder you will see ZapProm 3.0 and in ZapProm 3.0 there's an alias for launching the software and I'll select it so if this dialog window opens up that says try, buy, product, or quit, then everything's gone fine. But in a lot of cases, you're going to get an error that says that, um, that this product was downloaded by an unidentified installer because currently we aren't um, a registered installer with the Apple development program. So in order to get around that, there's a couple steps you need to follow. First, you're going to select System Preferences, and then you're going to get, go to Security and Privacy, and you want to go under the General tab, and if you have to unlock this little lock to access everything, you'll need to open it and put your credentials in, and you want to make sure that Allow Apps Downloaded From Anywhere to be installed. After you've done this installation, if you prefer to have this back to where it by default would be right here with uh, Mac app stores and identified developers only, then you can come back and change it. But the install zap prompt, you're going to probably need to set it there. And if you notice, there was a really interesting prompt. So we'll do it again. You'll see it says uh, it's asking for sure you want to do this and you'll agree to it. ZapProm Pro is perfectly safe. There's no harm in changing to this option for installing ZapProm Pro, but this is a good feature to protect your computer against downloading malware and any type of um, attacking softwares that normally would just be downloaded from the internet. So after you've installed ZapProm, it wouldn't be a bad idea to come back here and change this back. But for now, we'll just leave it like that and come back to where we were. So at this point, if you were going to run the trial, you would just select this button that says trial and a little dialog window would pop up asking you if you were going to use it as a trial and then there'll be a prompt that says type the word 
trial into this field and you select OK. I can't show you that on this computer because the trial's already been ran, but um, to activate it as a full license, which is what most people would do, is you'll hit this product button and once you've done that, you'll get a prompt that says you're about to activate a software license on this computer. Click continue or quit and you'll select continue and then there's another prompt that comes up and there's some instructions here. Um, activate later would just close this out and then you have internet activation which would allow you to just do the activation completely um, completely automated so you select that and I'll show you that in a minute. You fill in the fields hit activate and everything's done behind the scenes um, or there's manual activation which you would select here but, but if you're going to do it manually you need to actually select this link right here and go to a web page you'll see what happens a web page will open and it's going to have some form fields that need to be filled in which will ask for a request number and a serial number the request number that it'll be asking for is actually that request number right there below the link. So if you're doing a manual activation, um, you're going to need this request number and you'll need the serial number that come with your software. Um, you'll see how much easier the internet activation is because you won't need to do all this, but you'll fill all these form fields in and then you'll hit send and it'll give you an activation code. And so let's just close this out for now. And we don't have an activation code because we didn't really go through the process but I'll show you what you would do next so now you have a serial number and you have an activation code by following that link and then you hit manual activation now it's going to ask for you to enter your serial number and the activation code that you just received and then the system would pop up and say successfully activated but we're going to select activate later and all this stuff will go away and we'll close that out. Let's get the software open back up. And then we'll do product again. And this time we will do the internet activation. With the internet activation, you don't need the request number or anything because it's populated automatically. You just select internet activation, enter your serial number, and enter these fields, and select activate now. Once you've done this, you'll see a little window that says sending data and in a few seconds it'll say application successfully activated and you're done. So I think you'll find the internet activation by far the best way to activate. So anyway, I've covered the basics on how to get to the point of installing and activating Zaprompt Pro. There'll be other videos on how to use it and all that coming up soon. Thank you for watching this video.